Okay, guys, so I just got done, dropped off a young man by the name, um, I just dropped off a young man out. I won't say his name publicly, but if it ever comes to, I just dropped him off um, on my location data. So now I just dropped him off. Really, really cool interaction, right? So remember, we're still trying to figure out how to double that $100, but was playing the game and, you know, just got this uh, young girl needed help finding some LGBTQ books or whatever. She didn't end up getting that. She didn't have enough money for it. I felt bad. So hopefully next time we can, we're just going to get her the book she wanted, which is like Into Deeper Waters or whatever by F.T. Lucan. And then also the Watership Down book because it's my favorite book. So we're going to give that to her as well. Um, but basically, uh, we did that. And then we bumped into our friend. He needed a ride. He was going to walk all the way up like this mountain. It was like, I think it was about four or five miles. So I gave him a ride there. And now, obviously, like there was no money in that. But guys, it's the law of compensation, right? So if you go help, no good deed goes unrewarded, right? And so right now we're trying to transmute $63,000. So it's all good. We're still in the law of rhythm. The money will come. So right now I'm feeling like I need to go to Walmart. Um because I need to drop the car off. I actually kind of want to get on the road closer to Saratoga Springs so I can shop near there just in case my friend needs the car very quickly. So I'm going to go start heading over that way. And I had a really interesting impression, right? Because at first what happened is I was going to, I guess I should do a game report, right? Because this is the game, the game report. So it's really interesting because this is the 28th, so we're just coming out of our blackout period, and um, I exchanged my personal number with these two kids. So if you're getting this video, and you got my personal number, that means you have the ability to like be my friend, right? Um, because yeah, very few people get my personal number, so you guys have it, and you know who you are if you got it. One, the young lady, I don't even know her name, right? I don't even know her name. Um, very agentic, very very cool. She was looking for a gay romance book which is super funny. And then um, we started just talking and she was into cats. And just like literally, like literally, it was like, oh my God, you're like my soulmate, right? I even said that to her. I was like, I'm trying not to come off creepy. I was like, listen, I'm like 20 years, your, not 20 years, I'm not 20 years her senior, but it's like I'm more than twice your age. But low key, I feel like you're, uh, you know, like we were made, we were cut from the same cloth. So that was cool, and she had a fun time. And then the young man came by, started listening to us. Then we were able to play the game, so I got a game session out of her and him as well. And so that was a really fun experience. And then um, basically after that, she took off. I felt bad for her not getting the book, so I really want to make sure that we can get the book to her. Watership Down and Into Deeper Waters, I think, was her other book, so we're going to see if we can get that for her. Um, and then see if we can get that because that's her level one reward, right? And she walked away with that. So we want to see if we can do that. She's on level two right now. So we're going to see if we can help her get to level two and go from there. And then, um, yeah, really, really cool interaction, right? And it was just interesting. Obviously, being a grown man, they're like, oh, yeah, I can't be seen with them or whatever. But it's just kind of like that. I was like, listen, like, I have no interest, like, in hiding from your parents. But you kind of just allow the kids to kind of handle or do it whatever you want and you just you have to honor the sovereignty that's one of the reasons why i record everything right because i know for a lot of people like hey this is creepy or whatever but it's like literally like in order to shed dynamics and to shed light on dynamics you have to do it to all dynamics it can't just be a cult pro it can't just be culturally or a like culturally appropriate ones it's got to be all of them right um, so we can learn to find like what is truly going on in the dynamic. But that's why I operate in the transparency, right? Because, you know, there might be a kid who needs a ride. And then if I'm so worried about my image that I can't help that young man, you know, he's going to have this way worse time when I can just help him, right? But then he needs to be worried about his safety. But I know I'm not going to hurt him and I'm not, I'm not going to hurt her. So it's just like why give in to a reality that's not real? So that's kind of what we did. And so I applaud the two kids being brave enough to be open to like talk to me and make a difference that way. You guys really gave me some hope for the youth. And then just kind of the inspiring messages that were coming. There was a lot of really cool insights. Um, and it was just really nice. And I appreciated having a really nice, genuine conversation. Um, it's very interesting because like when you talk to young people, you realize like they're very authentic and real. The sad thing is it's just a lot of adults don't ever take the time to listen. And it was sad, like, you could hear the kid, like, um, the young man, he was talking about, 
earlier how his parents don't listen to him and I could just tell like listening to him and that's why without meaning to right that's why you talk so much and there's actually nothing wrong with that right it's because like you're not used to people actually listening to you that's why you were like so flabbergasted when you were playing the game with me because you're like wow someone's actually listening to me and so you didn't know what questions to ask and it's because most of the time you're around probably an environment where people don't listen to you or don't respect your words right which is sad right um but it's it's what happens right and so the game reveals these little sort of things about it and you know i didn't know you like for too long but like part of the game is that um because i'm i'm extremely authentic so it's very difficult for it's very difficult to be around me and lie right um a lot of adults love to lie a lot adults are great at lying um kids not so much so typically you can help them and kind of show them the way a little better but a lot of adults are full of shit right um so I'm glad to have spent some time with some people who weren't full of shit. And I actually, I'll be honest, guys, I, I feel really good. Um, I spoke with a friend last night, one of my best friends. Oh, this is a good omen, right? Look at this car. This is the same car that I'm driving. That's a good omen. And that's the third time I've seen a car like that. So there you guys go. This is an omen, right? So this is an example of what's called an omen, right? So if you guys look at that, there's that red Mazda, right? And there's that red Mazda. Now check this out. So this is something I'm gonna teach you guys about the th law of three witnesses, right? So basically, I'm also driving a law Mazda. So, see how it's copied to and from? That's an example of a color signal in the universal code. Now, if you're like, wait, what does that mean? How does that work? Once again, what's the point of the game, right? What's the point of the game? What am I trying to show you guys? Anyway, so, Red is a good signal of when it's usually that tells me there's something going on that I need to take time and think about. So what does that mean? So probably the backlash of driving these two kids and what does it mean to actually go and talk to kids? So here's the third witness because there's something that I need to think about because red means to stop and think. So let's stop and think about it. Why is it weird for a 34 year old man to be connecting with a young girl and a young boy. Why is that weird? Everybody, let's actually take the time. So I want you to pause the video and write your comment down below why you think that's weird. If you think it's weird or if you don't think it's weird, I want you to put it down. So I'm just gonna pause the video and keep going. So this is another conversation. Now I'm looking right at you. We're no longer having a conversation about why it's weird, right? Now we're gonna talk about where do you think something like that goes? Where do you think that idea that you had that you put down, where do you think is the natural conclusion if you keep thinking like that? So what's the natural conclusion? What's the feeling? What's the, the resonance? Where, where does that type of thinking get you? So maybe some of you put down like, well, it's weird because like he could be a rapist, he could be a bad person, right? And, and that's something that's good. So let's put that down, right? Or maybe you think it's not weird and it's perfectly natural and everyone's calm. Whatever your ideas was, I just want you to think, where does that ultimately go? Now, if you're asking, where does that ultimately go? The next question to then ask is, who is the type of person in this scenario? Right, so first off, in order to justify your way of thinking, who would I need to be and who would the kids need to be? So if you're like, okay, this is a pedophile, so these kids are victims and this guy's a perpetrator. So that's, so in that paradigm, you've put me as the perpetrator and you put these kids as the victim. Now, knowing and having living proof that that was not the case, how do you have to readjust those jewels? So who am I now and who are those kids now? Maybe I'm playing a long-term grooming game, right? That could be another way to sort of justify it. Maybe that's what I'm doing, right? But then it's like, well, why? Then let's ask another why question. Well, if this is true, why would this guy publicly put that on YouTube? Unless he wasn't trying to hide something. Well, then if I'm not trying to hide something and I'm not a, why would I do that? If I'm a perpetrator and I'm trying to take advantage of these kids and I'm trying to groom them, why would I publicly make known what I'm doing? So that's another set of questioning. So now take a pause and answer that question, right? Every time I ask a question, I want you to just pause and put your answer down and think it through. Really make sure you put words to it. Make sure that you can understand it. Now ask where that line of questioning thinks after we've asked that why question, right? Because now 
for some reason, you probably at some point are realizing that a perpetrator probably wouldn't be doing that. So then it's gotta be why. Well, what's the why? So my why is because I wanna help people and I believe when you see people in need or being friendly, talking to anyone, if someone needs a friend, I'm gonna be their friend. And that's what I think I was doing for the one girl because she needed to help finding the book. This young man needed her to ride. And then through that, we were able to build a connection, right? Now, you might have a judgment on that one way or another. I would ask you why you have that judgment. Where does that judgment take you? And who becomes what in that scenario? And who are you to have that opinion? Who are you to think that? Seriously. Think who is that and where did that come from? What does it mean to think the way you've done? And when will you see it true? When do you think if what I'm saying, what you think is true, when is it gonna happen? When am I gonna finally spring the trap on them? You know? 15 year old girl, 15 year old boy. When am I gonna spring the trap? So they're under legal age for the next three years. So there's a time bomb. After three years, then it's no longer a pedophile, right? Not technically. So when is the trap? So whatever idea you have about it, if it was that, that's got a three year time limit. So then after three years, you'd have to ask yourself, well, why did he do it? Because after three years, he never sprung the trap and he made himself publicly known. Why did he do it? Why did I do it, guys? Why did I do it? I'm interested in what you guys think. So let's stop and think, let's take it in before we have our judgments and our ideas about something. That's why those two cars came up so that I could have this conversation with you because you have a lot of thoughts and ideas that you don't understand and you can't articulate them and you don't make sense to them, but you have them. And it's probably because they're not your thoughts. They're thoughts that were put in your head by a society that's been damaged from mistrustful people hurting each other and taking advantage of each other. So you see an enemy where there is none and you perceive dangers that aren't there. And that as a result of that, you create a reality that is beneath the privilege before you. Let that sink in, guys. Do not live beneath your privilege. Life's greater than that. Stay happy, stay healthy. Onion Yabor, out!